Hey, The Nameless Dev here. I want to go over a concept I've been thinking about for a while, and then I recently read an article about Microsoft taking on the idea of using WebAssembly as add-ons for their flight simulator game. And I've been thinking about trying to implement WebAssembly in video games for a little while now. I haven't really worked on it too much until recently, and this Microsoft announcement really got me thinking about how I could do it myself. So if you're not sure what WebAssembly is, it's basically a portable bytecode virtual machine. So many languages can compile to the same target and run basically anywhere that supports WebAssembly. That's the concept at least. It's been in development for many years and it's a very slow development. But the fact that Microsoft is willing to take it on as the only official add-on support for Flight Simulator is really compelling and interesting. The reason for them wanting to do this is because WebAssembly is basically sandboxed. So it's extremely safe. It's not like a DLL, which is actually very unsafe. So as I was getting involved with this, I looked into a lot of different WebAssembly compilation targets and WebAssembly gateway interfaces that will let you basically interface with the WebAssembly code, but also use it in other programming languages. Since Godot has C Sharp, you can actually use something called WASM time. WASM time is a runtime for the WebAssembly. It loads the WebAssembly files. It will run the WebAssembly files. And then you create methods in your native language that will interface with the WebAssembly's methods. At the same time, you have to do a little bit of data shuffling to move data from WebAssembly into your native language. So with that said, I started to work on an example in Godot on how I could do this. I created a really basic example and I thought I would share it with you. So to start out, I'd actually like to show the code I wrote in assembly script. Assembly script is a language just very similar to TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript. Superset as in you can specify the types for variables. Now assembly script is pretty close to that. It's a little bit limited. There's less features, but at the same time, it compiles to WebAssembly. So I created a super basic example, I set up a scene where I could load a circle or a square, I could load in text, all from the assembly script, and Godot will read it and spawn the different items, move the different items around in the scene. So quickly I'll show you how this looks and then I'll go over some of the code. So all of, all of what you see here is actually being spawned from and processed with in assembly script, which is in WebAssembly. I created a sphere and I'm having it move across the screen at every single process interval. I also have some text for a label and it just kind of shows you the basics of what you can do. You could do quite a bit as long as you're willing to code the equivalent in Godot. Now by equivalent, I mean I had to not only load the WebAssembly file itself and operate on it, but you also have to load in sort of like helper functions. So whatever you're planning to do as mod features or mod ability, you have to create functionality within Godot that's going to take in the methods that are run from WebAssembly. So as an example, I have position. I track uh, an object that's spawned and then I reposition it at each interval or I rotate it at each interval. So what I do is I load in the action for WebAssembly and I called it process. Now, if you don't remember, I have a function called process in WebAssembly. And during this process, I am moving my circle. It's just, I happen to name it my circle uh, by 50 units every process interval. And when I run it, I'm passing along the delta that is in Godot's process method. I also wanted to be able to spawn in different items. So I created a spawn function that will take in either circle or square or text. I was considering the idea of creating an area and having triggers, but I didn't really get too far. Another thing to note is that when I say, oh, I'm gonna, in, I'm gonna instantiate a circle or a square or some text, I use an enum. And if you remember, an enum is really just a number. And luckily, when we use an enum in assembly script, it uses the same exact incrementing number. So it's zero, one, two, three, just like in Godot. So you can kind of rely on that and not have to hard code it. This is sort of gonna give you an idea of what you can do in Godot with WebAssembly. I hope it creates some ideas for you. So to get WASM time working in C Sharp, you have to install it. It's pretty easy to install. You just do .NET add WASM time. I think that's all I actually typed in the command prompt. And it adds it to your project. You have to 
initialize an engine, load the module, link the module, link any memory storage unit that there is. This is li literally all I'm typing in here. There's no extra code beyond what I'm showing you. Once you've linked the WebAssembly to WASM time, you can instantiate it. And I created a function called setup and I literally just run setup at the same time as the ready method in Godot. And I'll go back to the setup method in here. Now this really could have been called anything. I just happened to call it setup. We could also just call it ready if we wanted to, to try and keep it similar to Godot. So when I run setup, I log in setting up scene, which you can see here, log setting up scene. I'll show you that method in a minute. And then I create a circle and some text. I also created an area, but we didn't go over that. And then I set the text with this string here. Now on the back end of assembly script, there are some helper functions you kind of need to have. Now, if you actually wanted to have modability in your game, you would basically ship this environment.ts file with all of your helper functions that kind of make it easier for the modder. As you can see, logging a string is actually kind of complicated because WebAssembly doesn't necessarily support strings and arrays. So you have, there's a bit of a workaround currently because uh, like I said, WebAssembly is still in development. So some things are workarounds, some things are native to WebAssembly. So this is one of the workarounds that people have come up with. And so we create a, an array buffer and WASM time knows how to figure it out from that point forward. So if we go to the log function, we actually use this get memory method and read the string with the length. Here's our GD print. And as you can tell, this is a string. We did the same thing for the label text, except I just happened to call it text. We could have called it anything really. So as you see here, I say text, and then I say set my scenes text to this text. Now I track everything with an ID. So when I spawn an object in Godot, I instantiate it, I add it to the scene, but then I also get an instance ID and I return that to WebAssembly. So now WebAssembly knows how to track the instance in Godot by referencing the ID. So now each method that I have, such as text, will find the node and set the text. Here's another example where we reposition something. We find the node based on the ID, which is what is passed in from WebAssembly, and then we set the position. Now, it's kind of complicated to write arrays and it's a little sloppy in WebAssembly, so for this instance of setting the position of something, I have three parameters. I have the object ID, the X, and the Y. So if we go back to our assembly script, here I just have a helper function that I created called position. Whereas in the object, I have this position and it takes the object's position, puts it into the helper function called position that's a part of this environment.ts file. Because I'm not passing in the array, I'm just passing in the X and a Y. I thought it would be kind of fatiguing to have to write the ID and the X and the Y every single time for an end user that's creating a mod. So I created that helper function instead. So this is a pretty good example of how you could create a quick little helper function so a user could just create an instance of this object in assembly script and then just position the data like so. It sort of simplifies it for the user. But as you can tell, I'm still using the ID, the X, and the Y, which is reflected here in Godot. I hope that makes sense. WebAssembly, WASM time, C Sharp, the whole thing is, is actually pretty confusing. But once you get it going, it's sort of invigorating and it gives you a really great idea of how you can complement your game with some modability in a defined language like assembly script. You don't have to create your own scripting language just to have people mod your game. And you don't have to rely on modders to use unsafe DLLs or even just rip open your bytecode for some of your files. Because at the end of the day, something like that has complications for your game. And if you change your game later on, their mods may break and so on. There's two gotchas in compiling WebAssembly. The first is when you're compiling WebAssembly, some compilers, like say you want to compile something from Rust or another language other than AssemblyScript, they'll have their own helper functions in the WebAssembly. And the problem with that is when you try to load the WebAssembly file in, let's say, WASM time, there are 
functions in the WebAssembly file itself that you have to account for. And you may not know every single function. So it's a bit of a downside, and I feel like it's a shortcoming of WebAssembly. If you look through some of this code, you'll see there's an abort function. I didn't create an abort function. That was a requirement from AssemblyScript when it compiles into WebAssembly. It creates its own abort function, and I have to handle it here, even though I really don't care about the abort function at all. When you compile something, as say, from Rust, which is like a statically compiled language into WebAssembly, it has maybe three or four other types of methods that you have to account for. And it's really hard to know which ones you really need. I wish you could just set wasm time. Maybe you could, but I haven't found anything. I wish you could set wasm time to just ignore any other functions that you're not aware of. Now, lastly, a quick little tutorial on how to compile AssemblyScript. Assuming you've already downloaded AssemblyScript, which is pretty easy to do as long as you have something called Node.js, which is basically a server-side JavaScript. If you have Node.js installed, you can run a command to install AssemblyScript and it will become a compiler that you can run from your command line. Once you do that, you can create your TS file and just run this command, ASC, and then the TS file's name. And then the last little bit is you have to do output dash O and then the output file that you plan on having. So it would be like ASC my TS file dash O my output file dot WASM, WebAssembly. It's really that simple. And then you would want to put that in the root directory of Godot project. Well, I hope that gives you some good ideas about creating a modability for your game using WebAssembly, which is a great sandbox way to extend your game. And it'll also give you some sort of parameters that your modders could stick to.